and in the name of the most holy, most blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Before I begin to touch upon that passage, um, and especially after I feel that St. Patrick has already been with us and we have sung his homily, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really nervous now. And um, so I remember wise advice from my family. I remember one time we were in deep, intimate, loving conversation, and I was told, if you know nothing about this, why don't you just shut the hell up? <laughs> now, I'm, I'm sure your family has also shared wisdom such as this. <laughs> so, so mindful of this wise advice, um, to even begin to speak of probably, well, not probably, the most central mystery of our faith is a bit daunting every year. And this is two years in a row, as I reminded Father Stephen. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how that happened, but let us begin. We cannot truly know the being of God, but we seek understanding of what we believe to be revealed, and that leads us often to become confused and unsure as our being, our ability to comprehend, is pretty limited. And so our, our, study, our understanding being limited, we sometimes get something kind of like what the Baltimore Catechism shared with us. Now, I, I know, I saw Paul this morning, so I know he is um, intimately um, aware of the Baltimore Catechism as I was growing up um, as a Roman. But, you know, if you remember the image of the Trinity in the Baltimore Catechism, you have this um, very, very old Father God at the top who looks just cranky. And then you have um, this very loving, compassionate, gentle kind of Jesus figure with the long hair, um, which if you know, if you were um, learning catechism in the late 60s, early 70s, that just kind of fit. And then, and then you had this weird bird thing, which, you know, as a kid, you're kind of like, okay, so we have a God the Father and a God Jesus, and we will get the bird. And yeah, so it's kind of like when we try to understand this, it can just really go wrong. <laughs> and so it's not surprising that our mother Judaism and our, our younger sister Islam, amongst many other people in the world, are just a little kind of like, what are you Christians talking about? Well, as we must need do, let's turn to Revelation um, first before we try to seek understanding. What do we believe has been revealed? And it strikes me that our passage about wisdom in Proverbs 8 is not unlike the prologue of John's Gospel. We have this beautiful poetic praise of an awareness, a, a, a presence that is with God. And of course, you know, that which comes from us from Proverbs is perhaps rooted in a much much more complicated earlier understanding of the court of heaven and God's court um, as Judaism perhaps early conceived it. And thus we always have the spirit revealed as, as female, as the consort of God, even perhaps the wife, if you will. Now this is very early. Certainly in Second Temple Judaism, we have complete conviction in monotheism and the oneness of God, the singularity of God, and so wisdom retains her, her femininity, but there's an even more mysterious understanding of how that spirit of God is imminent in the presence of the temple, in the word proclaimed, and in the nature all about us. And if we look at John's, the prologue of John's gospel, we have this attempt using platonic understanding, really, a, a philosophy to trying to wrap our minds around how we could have experienced God in Jesus. Rabbi, teacher, Lord, and we believe Messiah. And so it really strikes me this morning how similar they are. This self-awareness, if you will, 
that God has within God's own self. And that really led me to reflect on some modern musings about the nature of human consciousness. You know, there are some people who want to argue, materialist scientists who want to argue that, you know, we're basically just kind of really complicated computers. And it's all about, you know, our neurons are basically kind of yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, and then you kind of get to human consciousness. <laughs> and there are other people who say, okay, slow down a little bit. Um, it's way more complicated than that. And I think most, most scientists would honestly admit that, that as much as they understand about our brain chemistry and how our central nervous system works, they really don't understand consciousness. And it's interesting, the conversations that are ongoing between scientists and philosophers and theologians about what is the nature of consciousness. Think about it, when you get up in the morning, what is maybe the first thing that you're thinking? Are you, are you having a conversation? Maybe you start right off with God. Or maybe you're having a conversation with yourself. I'm reminded of Gandalf's quote, um, Tolkien's quote in his Lord of the Rings where Gandalf is muttering to himself and Aragorn wants to be let in on the wisdom and Gandalf says, oh, pardon me, it's a habit of the wise we speak, or pardon me, it's a habit of the old we speak to the wisest in the room. And so I've, I've always, since I've gotten older, I love that quote. But, but yeah, we talk to ourselves all the time, right? Beginning right when we get up in the morning, we're, we're self-reflecting, we're, we're acting as though there are two selves within, or two presences within, and we have this wonderful ability in our consciousness to have this, this conversation. So we really aren't like anything, anything like computers. We don't live solely on a material plane. And, and this, this amazing mystery in our own humanity that allows us to be self-aware is wondrously creative. In fact, I think all creation comes out, that we humans commit to, comes out of this self-reflection. Our wonderful musicians create out of their own self-reflection and the giftedness that they have worked hard to encourage and to build within themselves. It's integral to their being. A doctor heals out of self-reflection. When you go to your physician, you don't want a computer. You want a human being to truly listen to you and to understand and to hear within themselves their knowledge and wisdom to come forth in healing and blessing to you. A teacher guides, I can tell you, out of self-reflection. It is an art we craft an entire lifetime. And a mother or a father, you also nurture your children out of self-reflection in what you learn day by day. So if we are indeed created in the image of God, perhaps this is the root of that understanding that even as we generate relationship, which becomes an offering of love, so has the eternal always done. So, I have not improved a whit on St. Augustine's self-reflection. Only offered a little bit of a psychological reflection on how we experience consciousness to maybe realize that the Trinity is not so weird, actually. It lives and abides in us. We are created in its very image. Let us rejoice in the world and the Spirit of God, all holy, all blessed, the compassionate, the merciful, the eternal. Love, beloved, love. Amen.